Today on Outside the Box Reviews, we're heading back to the jungle to take a look at the NECA Predator Series 100th Predator, the Alpha Predator. So we've gotten this really cool, crazy concept predator that basically is supposed to be the originator of the modern predators as we know it, being kind of the leader that took them from slavery into being their own race of hunters. And I have to say, NECA has packed this figure full of accessories and articulation and deco and from what i've seen he sits around the standard price for one of their ultimate figures but i'm gonna say right off the bat this thing feels a little more ultimate than a lot of ultimate figures they've done which is definitely exciting to see so we've got a lot to cover here so i'm not gonna waste any more time let's just jump right into it so with this figure be careful when unboxing it because inside of the kind of cardboard sleeve that has the backdrop for the figure packaging itself between that and the exterior box there are are three little packings of paper. First up, we get something that's definitely not going to fit on the screen all at once because I can barely fit it folded up four ways, but we get a poster of the Alpha Predator artwork. So you could have that on display if you want. And if you open it up, we get presumably a hundred other figures listed out here. So you can see the full checklist of NECA Predator stuff. And it has come quite a long way from up here with that crappy wolf figure that was decent at the time, but definitely is outdated now. And you know, now we're all the way down here getting some of these crazy super articulated predators and stuff and we get this biography for the alpha predator it's basically a read through of all of the information about where the predator race kind of originated from they start off as these more animalistic creatures that were taken into slavery by an alien race that was basically the original design for the predator if you ever saw that weird insecty duck looking thing and then they eventually this guy comes along and overthrows them and takes power Let's scroll up a little bit so you guys can see the end of that document there if you want to pause it and read it this is kind of cool it comes on like a nice piece of paper i know it's like a weird thing to talk about but it's like actually kind of parchmenty feeling so it gives it a little i don't know something it's it's not just a normal sheet of paper so kind of cool i guess i don't know what i'm going to do with this but it's there and last but not least if you have the predator hunting grounds game for the playstation 4 you can actually redeem a code to play as alpha in game one of the big things neck has done here that make this figure feel more ultimate to me is the inclusion of multiple sets of hands this is something we're more used to with higher end figures or import figures and it's something i've really been wanting them to do in the ultimate line because let's face it they've put out some figures with a ton of accessories and the figure just comes with two or three hands total and can't really hold some of them very well so we've got a great selection here on either end we have a left and right fisted hand then we have open hands for both sides and then we have two different gripping hands one for each side so it's a tighter gripped there for his left hand which I think is really meant more for his spear. I had his spear in the other hand at the beginning of this video. It was a bit loose. You can see here it's a tighter grip there on the left and then kind of more of an open grip on the right. I think the right is actually probably made more for his shuriken, but these are nicely detailed. Not a lot of paint, just really the claws and just kind of the standard plastic color with a lot of wrinkles and texture, but they look pretty darn good. So here on his right side, it's a pretty straightforward thing. You just take the peg you pop it into the socket there and you kind of have to wiggle it around a little bit, but eventually it will pop in place and you have his new hand on there. The left side is a bit more of a problem because he has a gauntlet and we'll get into this gauntlet a little more later, but that has to go on his wrist and then you have to slip the other hand over it. So it's a bit of a pain because this doesn't really articulate too well. So you kind of have to slip the hand in through there and I'm actually not going to do it on camera because I can guarantee you I'll break it. Alpha comes with his sickle weapon, which kind of looks like a curved piece of bone here with some wrappings around the handle, kind of a bit of bone sticking at the bottom. So I guess this maybe all be one piece and just carved out of a very large bone or something like that. That. Very cool looking. It's kind of tapered in here to look sharp. Has some great texture and some dry brushing, kind of a reddish over the gray bone. Looks very cool. And just testing, he holds it pretty well in his right hand there, the open gripping hand. So that's not too shabby. And left as well, hold it on either side. On his belt, we actually have a little loop here. So you could put that up through the loop on the belt. And then there's kind of a bump there in the middle. So once you get it past that bump, it will hang comfortably off of his belt. So that's great weapon storage right there. We also get his shuriken, and I'm sure I'm not the only one thinking Jeepers Creepers with this thing. It does look like a bunch of teeth or bones stuck together in a shuriken shape. Just for comparison, here is the, I guess would be the more modern version, the mechanical shuriken that came with the AVP Predators. But it's kind of neat to see the evolution of this into this. Obviously, I guess the 
the smart disc is some offshoot of this. I don't know. It's always confused me why they went from smart discs to shurikens outside of it just looking cool in the movie, but whatever. Yeah, it looks cool. Not a lot of paint detail on this guy. A stupid little piece of fuzz on there that there we go. But it does have one little extra bump sticking out there. Pretty neat. So if we bring in the right hand again, I think that's what that finger is for, really. That outstretched finger lets him hold it in a more convincing way, even though it is a little loose in there. In the left hand, it's pretty loose, but you could probably get into some poses where it's going to look okay, but it's just not as good of a grip on here with the left hand. We have these two additional bone claw accessories, and I actually had to look up some other reviews to see where these go. They kind of look like big teeth or more carved bone actually more like a femur like if you took somebody's leg bone and then sharpened it down like that would be the joint here at the base and then just sharpen the rest of it down into a big claw it's probably what these would be but they have a nice black paint job to them and these go on as our pseudo wrist blades so here on his right side on the gauntlet there's a little hole here at the top between the two lower blades and that will peg in there it doesn't go all the way in but there you have kind of a longer blade there and what i'm understanding with this side is you actually have to take it and flip it around and yeah, when I was putting the fist on earlier, it kind of snapped. It's glueable to fix it, but I'm just going to leave it like this for the rest of the review just so I can get it on and off easier. But at the back of this little spine piece here, there's another hole and you could peg it into that and just put it on his wrist. You know, this would be great if it was magnetic. If they had a little magnetic clasp on here and then you didn't have to get it over his fist, I actually might not fix this. It actually works a little better than I think it originally was intended. But then there you go. He's got his two longer wrist blades looking more like a badass predator and those are pretty cool but there's also some weapon storage with these as well i think so you can pop them off here and then flip them around and you can see here on his back he has these two similar looking claws sticking out of his backpack and as i said we kind of have a big port there so you can actually pop that in there have it sticking up and then on his left side there is a little tiny port there which is why i question if this is intentional because it is like a pretty tight fit with this but you can pop it on there and then have both of those extra claws Claws hanging out on his backpack as opposed to just being loose accessories when you're not using them. Next up, we have his spear, staff, whatever you want to call it. So it looks like we got two big mandibles up here, kind of lashed together with some kind of like tusks coming off the end. Those look great. There's a lot of great little dry brushing details in there, giving it different blacks and reds on top of the kind of brownish main color. The teeth and tusks all have a nice yellowy paint job. And then you can see a little more on the backside. Then it gets thinner into like a nice wrap. Not a lot of detail there. This is also kind of a more flexible plastic, which is nice. So I don't feel like it's going to snap on me. You can kind of see that looks like a long bone here. And then it comes and connects to another bone. It almost looks like there's a seam here in the middle, but it doesn't seem to come apart. So I don't think that's an intentional feature or anything. We have a spine wrapped around the bottom of this looking really cool. You can see another separation in the bones, some more wrappings in there, and then a big kind of raptor looking talon there on the back. Very cool looking. As I mentioned earlier, his right hand doesn't hold it very tightly. I think if you slide it down a little bit past the wrappings, it gets a little better, but it's not great. The left hand, however, will get a very tight grip on it. So this is definitely how you want to have him holding it. I guess if you put it some ways, it gets a little loose, but for the most part, it seems to hold it pretty well. So that's really what you want to do with it. And last but not least for accessories, we get his mask. So this is based off of that original Predator design that was scrapped for the first movie and now brought back into his mythology through his backstory here. You've got those mandibles actually these mandibles in the front look similar to that blade that was in the back of his staff so i don't know if those are supposed to be similar i know it says in his bio his armor all came from one of these aliens so it really could just be that the one in the back of his staff is a different part of the alien or from a larger one of the species or something with those cool big eyes on there they're kind of lightish gold in the middle and it gets a little darker as it goes out and then another layer on top of that the whole thing is kind of a coppery reddish brown with the black teeth there at the bottom these side Side pieces are flexible. The whole thing's kind of a soft plastic, but the side pieces, they don't really articulate, but you can kind of move them out of the way if you need to. It's a bit of a pain to get this on his face though. You can see there's kind of like clips on the inside and I assume they're supposed to fit over his head in certain ways, but to me, it's just so far been trial and error trying to get it to actually make a solid connection to his face. Like it'll be on there. Of course, now it's sticking, but like I'll get it on there and it will fall off immediately. So I don't really know how great the attachment method on this thing is, but it will stay on his face if you play with it long enough. So 
Um, <laughs> your mileage may vary there, I guess. So I think NECA did a fantastic job with the sculpt on this guy's face. His head is very ornate looking, much more so than like the movie Predators. We can see it kind of has like a crest down the middle that's split, these kind of polygon looking shapes and some heavy scales around it, followed by the frill where the dreadlocks start to come out that we're more familiar with on these Predators. So I really like that. The jaws themselves look pretty cool. We could see there's some extra teeth in there. I think Wolf Predator had some stuff like this, but maybe not quite as much extra teeth going on there. So I, that could just be like, since this is supposed to be a more primitive predator, maybe those are evolutionary leftovers that he hasn't lost yet that get lost later on in the predator evolution. Who knows? I'm just speculating on this part. We have his eyes in there, which are kind of a reddish color. The eyes are one of the parts that's lacking for me on this figure, to be quite honest. They don't stand out very well. They get sunken in very easily by the rest of the sculpt. And it's a lot because it's a very heavy hooded eye that they have going on here so they are recessed to begin with but it would have been cool if maybe they would have done something to brighten them up a little bit and just make them a little more noticeable because I've seen even some photos of this guy he almost looks like he doesn't have eyes like you just cannot see them <laughs> through the sculpt but the overall paint is cool it's kind of a pearlescent looking paint and then he has the blue dreadlocks on there which look really good he's got some shorter ones up front that are kind of tied together and the more traditional long ones hanging off the back with a really cool like braided texture and some brown spots through them and he kind of has a top knot there going on from when he was working as a barista, I guess. And uh, you can see some wraps around that as it goes down his back. But these are actually loose and separate after the wraps, so that's pretty cool. And they're actually really flexible. I think they've always been this flexible, but I haven't played with a Predator figure in a while, so it's kind of cool to see you know, how poseable these are and everything. Going down the body, he's kind of a sculpted on necklace. I think it might be a loose piece, but he's got a lot of layers on here, so it's kind of hard to see. No netting on this Predator, which makes sense, being like an early version of the character. And his armor is supposed to be all that exoskeleton, so it shares a lot of the same paint apps that the mask had. And you can see it kind of looks like spine and ribs going across his own chest. With the shoulder guard back there. The backpack's kind of hard to see because of all the dreadlocks over top, but you can see some of his dreadlocks are going through the backpack. We have kind of a weird little like goldish piece that looks pretty cool. Only problem is mine has a little nub on it, so it looks like it was like cut off in sculpting, but overall it looks pretty good. And that of course is where those spikes come out of his back. We can see a little more of that rib detail going down the rest of his back, another like spine looking piece. On his upper arms we have these wraps with little bits of vertebrae sticking out of them. The wrist gauntlets are more of that exoskeleton look, but then here on his right side we have like a jawbone and another piece that kind of looks like his backpack where it has a gold bit but not quite as ornately painted there at the top. And then this big old mandible on top with some tusks. This will actually slide. It does actually peg out if you're not careful, but I don't know if it's really supposed to come out, but it will slide here to kind of replicate our old wrist blades. So like the very primitive version of that effect. So that's pretty cool. And beyond being able to just slide this forward and back, the top claws are on ball joints. So you can kind of rotate them a little bit up and down and you can see there is a bit of a spike, like a bone spike coming out in the center here. So I guess that's an added blade feature you could have the Predator using. Very similar detail here on his left side. Going down to the waist, we have like a spine looking belt. At first I thought it might be a xenomorph tail, but between reading the story and looking at the size of it, it's definitely way too small and just, yeah, way too small to be that. But then we have more of that kind of exoskeleton coming around for the belt. We have some fur and skulls making up his loincloth here, and even larger furry loincloth looking very primitive there on his back. More exoskeleton looking bits there on his upper legs, also his knees, and his lower leg armor looks pretty cool. It's like lashed together bits of that stuff, so it just looks really neat, and I like how they kind of made it just this caveman predator. His feet have a bit of a unique design. I think this is a little different than what we've gotten before. Maybe more in line with the AVP stuff, but has a cool sculpt to it, more guards up at the top. And you can see he does actually have the wraps continuing onto the bottom of his feet with some peg holes. So both of my desk lights have gone out because the batteries ran out of juice, but I'm just gonna push through with articulation and finish this guy up. So we do have a ball joint at the neck so he could swivel. He could look up, not a ton. He could look down a decent amount actually, and we get some pivot there. The arms are on pin and socket joints, so they'll move forward, back, as well as out to the side. Not really hindered out to the side because of the arm, 
armor because it's all rubber, but going forward and back, it is hindered a bit. I also did note there's kind of like a dead zone here at the very bottom of his left arm, at least on mine. I'm gonna take this guy off because it's flopping around now. So you can't really get anything very precise at this bottom limit of his arm movement, but once you go up, it kind of stays in place. So that's a bit of a bummer. It's probably just mine. You can rotate at the elbow and there is a very nice double jointed elbow there. So you get a great range of articulation and they've sculpted it in a way where it really looks pretty solid. It's not quite <laughs> organic looking because it kind of flattens out there, but to get that range of motion is very nice. So I'm not going to complain too much about how the joint looks. The wrists can swivel as well as hinge up and down. Every single arm has the same hinging articulation there. He has an upper torso joint here. So kind of a ball joint. You can go a little forward, a little back, turn side to side as well as lean. And then a similar ball joint there at the waist. So really the two just complement each other and give you a really nice range of waist articulation or mid torso articulation. The legs, pin socket joints, you can go pretty far forward, pretty far back. It is a little hindered because of that back loincloth, but not as bad as it could be. You can go out to the side a decent amount. It kind of feels like it's a ratcheting joint in there, which is nice. Upper thigh swivel, double jointed knee, very similar to those elbows. You can get them almost all the way back. Looks really good, fairly clean for what it is. And then we get a really nice ball joint there at the foot with a good range of motion. You can really get that in a lot of different directions. And for his eyes comparison, let's bring in two other old man predators. On the left there, we have the Predator 2 Elder Predator. This is the second release with the added articulation based off the newer body. And then there on the right, we have the AVP Elder Predator. And these guys all look pretty good together. Obviously the older non-AVP stuff is short. They went with this guy being more of that larger body. It makes sense to me that they went with the bigger AVP style body for this Alpha Predator. It just makes them a lot more imposing and badass looking. But these guys all seem to scale pretty nicely together. I will say though that in trying to get this guy standing up, I am realizing he is very top heavy because you know he's got skinny little predator legs and then a lot of stuff on his upper body. So I am having a little trouble getting him to stand all the time. And then here we go with a Dutch figure next to him seeing how tiny Arnold is next to that predator. I believe Arnold is in the hunting grounds game. So this may actually be something you could get in the game itself. This predator Predator fighting Arnold. And then there on the right, I grabbed the very first Xenomorph I could find to stick next to him. And I'm just now realizing that it is the very old one with the cut hips, as opposed to being, you know, one of the newer ones that's more articulated. But I think they're about the same size, so I'm not going to go hunt down another alien just for that. But you can see the Xenomorph stands pretty much the same height as our Alpha Predator when standing more or less fully upright. But I'm assuming this guy may not have been fighting any Xenomorphs in his lifetime. That may have come much later. So that's our our 100th NECA Predator. Well, not my 100th NECA Predator, as much as it might have felt like it at times. And I've got to say, this is a pretty jam-packed figure with a lot of cool stuff with him. This is definitely more what I want to see when NECA does an ultimate figure and charges that somewhat premium price. There are obviously some gripes here. Some of the joints are a little loose. That arm blade thing on his left side is really kind of ill-designed. The eyes, like I said, aren't the best. But it is a solid figure. It is very cool and I had a big smile on my face as I took this thing out of the package and started messing with it. It's very well done. So this guy's definitely going to get a recommend from me. And even if you have 99 other Predator figures, I think they did enough here where he feels very different from the previous releases, very much his own thing, and that definitely adds something to the overall experience of this guy. It also helps that I'm a person that loves lore in series. I love seeing background stories of characters when it's done right, and I think I think the background story with this guy is something that doesn't really intrude into the main continuity of Predator stuff, which is already a mess anyway. But I like the idea of seeing a less evolved Predator and kind of where the species would come from before it became the very high tech society that we know from the films and other media. So this guy gets a recommend and that's going to do it for today's review. So I will see you guys in the next one later.